Engineers Without Borders is a volunteer organization that's aiming to improve the quality of life of people in developing countries. And the idea behind it is to develop sustainable solutions so they can improve their health, education, sanitation, access to water, sometimes access to food, access to uh, health uh, resources. So I've been on five trips. Three of them we took in Ecuador, past two have been in Malawi. First of all, I thought it was amazing. I thought, this group is doing things that are directly affecting people. What makes EWB unique is the premise of that the projects are initiated by the community. Most of these times, in, in most of the countries that we've worked before, you make a commitment of about three to four years with the community. So it's not something that I will go plop it in place and then disappear. We set up a bunch of desks from the school buildings below this big tree they have outside. It was just kind of a, a surreal setting for a meeting. And then we decided that building a facility for them to be able to cook their meals for lunchtime for the students it would be the, the most appropriate activity. It's a school that um, accommodates about 2,000 students, so children may commute about seven or eight miles on a daily basis back and forth to school. They, they depend on getting that meal. When they, that meal is not present, attendance in school starts dropping off. Last year when we visited, they had a very small facility with practically no roof. They had a brick kitchen building outside with like a thatched roof, but that was collapsing. While we keep the attendance, we'll probably attract more children to come in, require more teachers, it will improve you know, educational level of the area. Obviously there's a lot of long-term effects, but the immediate effects it would be in retention of the students, uh, the student population right now. There's so much planning that normally goes into construction, and we did a lot of this planning, but a lot of stuff is just day-to-day -day that you don't think of. Whatever we do, it has to be done with local techniques, it has to be done with local material, and it has to be sustainable by the people. We had to find the things that we have laying around to use for tools. They had scaffolding that they made, they had some old pallets that they would break down and rebuild and prop up. In the future I will be a little more receptive to just on the go making use of what I have. The students were able to understand that people behave differently and you know they interacted with a lot of the locals and they had to deal with the customs of the locals. They learn that there's different cultures and they're starting to appreciate that. And I think they bring that back here because now they become the emissaries of the different cultures that they need to be assimilated here. So they had several people every day who would come and help us. And then at the end we brought all those people back and probably more came and joined us. And they were very happy to see what we had done, eager to see if, how we'll be able to help them moving forward. The other thing for me, and it's always very touching, the gratitude of the people, that they feel so touched by what you are doing for them that, you know, just always gives you uh, the chills. I'm getting a lot of great construction experience, but it also changes the type of engineering that I want to do. So the kind of engineering I want to do is a little more one-on-one -on -one type of engineering with people.